Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's June 30th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and this is going to wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Fridays. As you can see, I talked about this yesterday that we'd probably pull back and test that midline. Early this morning, we were trading way down here, so it was looking like there was a possibility that we may not bounce here, and we still may not bounce here. But with us closing above that midline, that's a good sign that prices may turn up now and head back to this trend, to the trend line. Uh, I talked about that in the mid-morning chart that uh, this was something to watch for. And so this is a semi-positive uh, ending for the day, I guess you should say, the fact that we closed right here at the midline. That means we could turn up and go higher. Uh, that's a nice bounce there. And they weren't able to keep prices down there. So I'm hoping that maybe we're going to bounce here. That's what I'm kind of looking for. That's what I was looking for yesterday. Uh, and you can see we didn't quite get there. So it made me think that we probably had more, t more room to the downside, which uh, we talked about that yesterday. So, and this is, uh, uh, but this is kind of the outcome that I was hoping for and that I was talking about in the mid morning chart this morning on the website. So uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow, what tomorrow brings, but uh, there's a look at it. Let's flip over. It's really kind of a, uh, a sideways kind of day we closed down from yesterday but it's still kind of a mostly sideways kind of day today but you'll see that when we flip over let's flip over and look at the uh, 2000 tick intraday chart. okay here's a look at our intraday chart uh, again this is a 2000 tick chart and you can see that uh, the trading is really still mixed uh, we had a pretty good trend here with several trades and then it looked like we were going to top out and we had a few trades here uh, we did close down from yesterday, which yesterday's close was this line, and today we closed down here. So it's a down day, but as you can see, the trading's rather mixed. This was a really nice rally here. It's too bad we couldn't sustain it, but uh, prices did sell off there once we uh, kind of got back up here and tested yesterday's prices. So, but we'll zoom in here and we'll go through the trades. A few more trades today, uh, a little easier trading than what we had yesterday for certain. But uh, let's zoom in. We'll go through the trades and we'll wrap this day up. And we'll wrap this week up. You had to be a little patient this morning. Seven o'clock came right in here as we're turning, making this turn. Uh, we traded up. We're just kind of chopping sideways. But we did get a triple test here with a nice bar. You actually had a triple test here. This is almost kind of sideways one test. But you could really count this as a triple test, but that bar is not good enough. But when you get this bar, which is also a lower high, uh, I think you you want to take that short. And this turns out to be a pretty nice move. So if you caught it, you, you probably caught a runner on this one and um, could get a nice move. Maybe that's the only trade you need for the day. But uh, comes down, bounces. Notice that we didn't get it. We got the break outside here but we didn't get a new high before this sold off so prices still came back and retested that high and that's the thing about uh, this is a good example of just because you didn't get a retest doesn't mean prices won't try again it doesn't mean that prices won't go lower first so th so it's not as cut and dry as hey we're going to get a break and you automatically going to take a trade and go straight to the top and then instantly turn and go lower it doesn't work like that so you have to kind of follow the price action and you have to get a little experience of seeing what prices do but when you get a triple test right there at a high when you're working sideways the odds are you're at least coming back to here and if you get lucky maybe they keep going and it's a range day and you go all the way to the other side of the range or whatever or it starts a new trend down but even though it looked like we were going to go much lower suddenly it reverses and it comes back and it does retest and it get a new high before prices actually sell off. So price action still did exactly what it was supposed to do. You had a break of this green channel. We even had an overshoot of this green channel. It looks like an overshoot to me. If you move this up here, you can see we're not touching the midline. Maybe we did there. I mean, maybe this is still correct. Maybe it's not an overshoot because, and that might be why we sold off here at first because some people saw it as an overshoot. Some people didn't. Uh, I don't know. But. I really thought it was more like this and we had an overshoot and that was what we were leading to this reversal. And then suddenly we run up and we make a new high anyway. And there's really two legs up here. If you measure that, it's probably close to two legs up. 
you can see the two legs there they're not quite a lot of times if you just measure the bodies but I don't ever do that so um, if you just measure the bodies you get a lot closer so um, but I generally don't do it that way but sometimes you'll see that if you measure the bodies you get a lot closer but it's still two legs up whether it's a measured move or not the fact that we didn't reach the target tells you we're probably gonna sell off harder and there it goes we get a really strong sell-off so uh, you got your break two legs to a new high and now you're trending down but notice here you made this low and you would expect prices to try to retest this little move here they tried to go lower once try to go lower again try to go lower yet again and that's a failure right there if it breaks higher so I like taking that back to the long side it took it a minute to push on up, but what does it do? It runs up, makes a new high, and then it sails off. And I didn't mark this one really because you didn't get a new low here, but you could look at that as two legs up and a new high. I, I guess I say I didn't mark it, but I marked it green. But if that would have been a clear second entry, I'd probably mark that red. But this just looks like sideways stuff, and uh, it, it, there is a new high. It's a fairly bearish bar. And you're a good ways away from the EMA. So that if you're going to be aggressive, this is the kind of trade you want to take. But anytime you start trying to pick tops, you're going to get some failures. So just be prepared. So if you don't want to have failures, don't take those kind of trades. But anyway, trends down. You get a lower high here, but you can't really. That's too far, and it's not a good signal bar or anything. And then, of course, you bounce, and it turns down again. But again, no setup here. I mean, you could say, hey, maybe there's a hidden second entry, but the signal bar is not very good. So you get a lower high here. When you get a neutral bar and then another neutral bar with matching lows, don't go short there. Even though that took off, a lot of times that'll break lower and then run back up here to the trend line and then turn down. So you can't really take that one either. And then down here, you're just, this is just chop moving lower and there's just no setups there. And then suddenly we bounce off the low end. We come up, you do get a second entry here, but you don't want to take that in that trend. And notice you get a break and you try to go higher multiple times. This kind of a repeat pattern of this up here and prices can't do it. Uh, you could really argue that there's a triple test right here. Uh, and maybe you take that one. But uh, if you didn't take that one, I would definitely take it. And if you took this one, you probably want to take it on the engulfing bar because it breaks higher and then runs past. If you wait till down here, uh, I think this makes a new high and you probably get stopped out. 364, or is that a double top? Yeah, see, it makes a new high and you would have got stopped out. Uh, I mean, that's uh, because you didn't quite touch the trend line. So I, and because that's an engulfing bar, I'd be real careful with it. But if you're going to take it, you you got to pretty much take it when it goes past right there. I don't think you wait till down here because this is what could happen to you. It comes back and now you definitely got a triple test and the signal bar is not perfect, but if it breaks below these two bars here, we're probably, you're going to get a scalp out of it because it's, it's definitely confirming the key entry point. It looks like you're close here, but it's hard to know, but definitely here, and it looks like I had the trend line right all along, and you just go short right there. Uh, there is another lower high here, but this is the signal bar, and this is just an inside bar, so you can't take it. We drop on down, we bounce, and there's a hidden second entry here. Notice you got a leg up, first entry, push up, second entry. Uh, no, it doesn't break lower here on this chart, and so I'm probably confusing a lot of newbies. But that's what we call a hidden second entry. It's very advanced, so if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it because it'll just confuse you and lead you to a bunch of losing trades because you really need to know what you're doing if you're trading a hidden second entry. But the fact that it's right there at the key entry point, if you recognize it and you can see it holding there, probably take that trade. And then we drop on down and then finally we just start chopping sideways. I don't see anything in here. You can't go long yet. I don't see any shorts in there I would want to take. Um, and we just kind of chop higher until we finally get a break here. But notice you're coming down. You get a first entry and you get a second entry. Well, that's the first break of this trend line. So you can almost guarantee we're going to try to retest that high. But if nothing else, you're going to probably come back to the EMA. And there's a lot of room there. So I like that one for that reason. This one's close to being uh, green. But if you draw your little trend channel, 
you do get a close outside and new low. And so you've got everything you need there in this second entry. And of course we run up and we still don't make that new high. And we just start chopping sideways, but you get a triple. Notice you tested it once, came back and tested it again. You tried to go higher and you came back again. So you could look at that as a triple test. It's just a really big bar. It's a little bit congested. I mean, that's 26 ticks. I, I wouldn't take that trade, but I marked it because somebody will ask me about it. And it, it's a triple test. So, and you're looking for prices to make a new high. You're not expecting this to happen over here, but it doesn't matter because this plays out and then it goes higher. Uh, but you're running up. You don't, I don't see anything in here. I don't think you want to go short right here either. There is a, what, a failure right here. And maybe you take that one. But there's always a chance this trend line still gives you some resistance like that, and it could come back and stop you out. So I don't think you want to enter in any of this. But notice how all of a sudden you get that same repeat pattern. We've seen it a few times here. And you get a first test. You make your low. You test it once. You test it twice. And you get this nice bullish bar. Uh, it looks just like this, really. So um, prices are probably going to go higher. Notice you got to close outside this yellow channel and a new low right there. And so it's almost a exact repeat pattern. And you get a higher low here. It actually breaks lower and turns up. I don't think I would go long with that much stem there, but if you trade it on the engulfing bar, I like that one. Cause it's a try. It's basically going, it's basically a breakout pull back long after coming out of this little tight congestion area or kind of a rangy looking area. We run on up to the other side, we come back, we get a first entry and then a second entry right there. Uh, you really don't have this trend line in place yet. That just kind of sets the trend line. But a second entry right there, if it breaks above, you'll probably get a scalp. You do get a higher low here, but that bar is really kind of neutral. Uh, it's, it's more bullish than neutral, but I just think it's a little risky. Uh, we probably should have taken on off there, but... Uh, that's probably going to act somewhat as a, of a trap. So maybe you take that one runs up. And then again, we're just, this is the same repeat pattern all over again. You kind of work sideways. I don't have my line here, but you can kind of see the support across there. And it's like a triple test, but the signal bar is a little iffy. So I'm not crazy about it. If you took it, if your signal bar was a little better, if you took that, yeah. But it's, it's just a little iffy. But it's a repeat pattern. So then we run on up. We turn down again. And we're just working lower here. Um, by the count, this would be a second entry when it broke higher here. But I'd look at this as a first entry. And then your second entry doesn't come till down here. And again, it's not a very good signal bar. It is an engulfing bar. So maybe, again, maybe it's one you think about to ride back to the EMA. But because you don't have any close outside that channel, I'd sit tight. Especially since this is outside. Uh, you're, you know, you're, well, actually, when you see this, it's not outside. But I'd probably skip that just because you don't have a close outside of it. So you can't even, you don't even really expect to get two legs there. It could just turn straight back down and we could keep going. Because technically this channel played out and I mean this one's kind of been proven so you're probably going to get a retest of the high but I'd wait on something better than that and then notice what happens you come up you get a first entry and then a second entry so now you got a failure and maybe you take that one there I wouldn't take it um, I don't I think it would have failed on you if you did let me just see it might be enough there to get out on that one but I, I honestly Yeah, there's enough. You would have got out, but I wouldn't take that trade. Wait on the reversal pattern, and there it is. Look how bullish that is. That's where you go long. And, of course, you run up to a new high, and you come back another second entry here. But because you've already had the break, two legs up to a new high, I would be very leery of entering right there. You could, um, but I would at least draw my trend channel, and I'd want the rules to have played out and you can see they have it and notice we come back we try to make the new low and we can't it pushes up and finally it, it looks like we're finally going to sell off and next thing you know it's rocketing up again but i don't see anything there's no there's no entries here long or short and there's that kind of repeat pattern again but this one's right into the ema 
I wouldn't take it. Uh, but it is a repeat pattern. Notice we don't quite make a triple tail, but it still looks so much like that, that, and that, that if you took it, I wouldn't completely fault you there. Um, high or low here, can't take that. And I marked this one with green. It's a reversal pattern. It's a failure. And the problem is it doesn't come back to the EMA, which is what you want to see. But you can clearly see that trend channel. And it's in play there. And so... Even with that, it still almost it still tried to get back to the EMA. So maybe you take that trade, and if you did, it's one of the better moves of the day. It's a pretty nice trade, and this is a really strong trend here. This thing is starting to look strong because we should have sold off here by now. I mean, we've had a couple of this is like the third trend that reestablishes itself in this overall uptrend. You can see one trend, two trends, three trends. And so uh, this one comes back. There's a little second entry right here. It's a little congested, but it's right off the key entry point. It's a fair. It's a fairly strong momentum and trend. The key would probably be: Do I have enough room to get out of before I get to those highs right there? I don't know that you do. I didn't measure it, but I don't think you do. It doesn't look like it. So that I mean, you could still try to get in with a limit order and try to get a get you give you get you the room that you need but you might take it regardless because look at the momentum there i mean again this is the third attempt to go higher um you know, you know it looks like prices are really wanting to trend higher here and suddenly we get a sell-off and prices try to go higher multiple times they don't of course you got this trend coming down here and there's a shorter term one here i didn't draw it it doesn't really come into play but there's one right there too but notice you, so that, that might lead you to think, hey, we're going lower here, again, off here. But there's no setup here either. Too congested, not a good signal bar. And But notice that new high, and then you try to go higher once, twice, and it fails, and it does confirm that trend line. I like going short right there. I really thought prices would take off, but it's an easy scalp, but you're not going to get anything more than that out of it. And then it pushes up and gives you a second entry. Notice the new low, first entry, second entry. And there's pretty much a double top there. So I like, and there's there's a little room back to the EMA you got to play with there too. So I like that one. Because um, we're probably going to make a new low on the retest here. And you get a lower high here, but it's still above the EMA. Signal bar is no good. There's no reason to take that. And of course, you get a failure here. It's not a reversal pattern. It's just a failure. Uh, right at the key entry point. So... When it breaks lower, you probably get a scalp out. That's probably going to trap some longs there. People trying to, you, there's a little support across there, and people are going to try to pick a bottom, and that's why we don't do that because this is what happens to you most of the time, and it, you're better off to wait and try to catch the, the reversal or the trap out of it. And prices just take off and shoot on down here. And, but now you've had your breaking new low, and guess what? we got a trend working the other way. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see any way to get in this. You can't. You don't want to be buying down here. There's no real chance to buy up here, and then you get a close outside and you high. That's another one you may consider right there going short. I didn't mark it. There's always some green ones you could argue for. Uh, drops on down and it just reverses. We've already had a break in new high, and so there's no reason to be buying right there. If you draw your little trend channel, you can see there's no reason to buy there. Even though it shoots off and takes, goes straight up. Actually, let was change the color of that one just so we kind of keep them. Uh, you can't go long. You, you don't want to go long there. If it was a second entry, maybe. And if you had a, or if you had a close outside and a new low in a second entry, maybe. But you just can't hardly enter there. But runs up makes a new high and maybe maybe i don't have this drawn right maybe some people were looking at it i mean even there i mean i'm not gonna argue that's not right and sometimes you'll see that you'll see a little push outside down here um and that would so some people may have seen it that way and maybe that's why we run to a new high but i really think it's 
more like so to me it fits better there and it makes more sense you get a close that side and you high and that's why it sells off so hard but you know don't argue with the price action who knows you know it doesn't matter uh, it is what it is and we pushed up to another new high um, I don't think I'd go short there on that momentum if you draw your trend trend channel there's no reason to go short right there at all and yeah it works but the first time you take one like that guess what will happen to you I probably don't have to tell you, you already know probably but anyway we're just going sideways and then it breaks higher and fails and turns down look how bearish that is um, I like going short there draw your trend line you make a lower eye here no setup um, and then you make a new low first entry second entry it actually broke higher and then turned down but you could you could trade that on the engulfing but just go short right there either way lower high here but again no signal bar no good then you rally close outside new high and you make a lower high right here and you could argue too there's maybe a triple test across there but being right there at that key entry point being that bearish I like that that signal bar I don't see any other entries here um, we run on down you do get a close outside but you don't make a new high and that's just the first entry not the greatest signal bar when you're expecting prices to come back over here anyway and notice you just sell off there and you get an overshoot here and I don't see any there's no you don't want to enter in any of this long or short really And you just don't get a chance to go long in, into this. This is two sideways. And to me, that looks like one leg up with the first entry. And so your failure is way up here. And again, uh, you did have an overshoot, but there's no break of this yet. So, uh, and it's so close to 230. I don't think you want to take anything else in there. I just get, I just, to me, in my opinion, after about 140 or whatever time this was, there's nothing else left there that would be worth risking. And that's how I saw it. So, And again, there's probably always some more you could argue to be yellow in here. But, you know, we're not going to split hairs over uh, aggressive type trades that could go either way. If you, you know, if you feel like you like them, take them. And, you know, just don't whine when you... <laughs> Don't whine when um, when it fails on you. So uh, stick to the sure things. You only need one or two of these a day to make a nice living doing this. And uh, we have several people that have proven that's the case. So it's not just me saying it. Uh, all you need is a couple of these trades a day, and you can make a really nice living. And and it, I'm not going to say it's not that hard. It's hard to get there. But once you get there, it's not that difficult. It's really not. It's it's very doable. So just keep working on it. If it's something you want to do, you know, if it's just a hobby and, you know, if you're doing this for a hobby and nothing more, then that's great. You know, if you're sim trading or, you know, playing with MES with a few hundred dollars and it's just a hobby, that that's great. Do whatever you want to do. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. But if you're doing this for a living and you're putting serious money into it, wait wait until you've proven on the simulator you can do it and then i would say go to the mes and prove you can do it there and a lot of people want to skip that mes step because it, because you can't really make any real money there but that's why you go to the mes for step two because you can't really lose a lot of money there either i mean you can if you're if you you know if you start adding on and breaking the rules and you know markets going against you and you're moving your stop and adding on and doubling down and trying all the craziness that you read about on the internet you could still lose some money in the mes but if you follow the rules and trade the way we teach you to you can't lose any serious money you know even if you lose every trade you know you're not going to lose you're not going to blow out your life savings account unless you just don't have any life savings i mean uh, you never say never but uh, you're not gonna get hurt seriously and if you mess around in the mes you can get hurt seriously real quickly you can blow an account in the blink of an eye so uh, 
follow the steps, start with a simulator, prove you can do it. That's the whole idea to prove that this works, prove to yourself it works, prove that you can do it and make it work. Then jump over to the MES, because if you can do it on the sim trader, the way this works, is you're trading live data, you're trading exact data that you would if you were trading with real money. So there's no reason if you can't do it on the simulator that you can't do it live except between your ears. And some people can't ever get past that. So I'm not going to say that because you do it on the simulator, you've proven you're going to be successful, but you've proven you can be successful. Now, whether you get there or not, that's another story because some people just, they just fold. I don't know what it is. When there's real money on the line, they, they start making mistakes or they have a loser and it affects them mentally where if it's not real money, it doesn't really affect you that way. So, so much of what we do is mental. You got to get, you got to get a handle on the psychological part of trading. And that's a big, big piece of it. There's two steps to this. You got to learn how to do the strategy and the technical part of it. Once you got that down, then you got to get past the psychological issues. And if you can conquer both of those, you can make a great living trading a couple of trades a day. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.